that you inherit your mitochondria from your mother. And if you were in my talk this morning, I apologize for saying the story a second time, but some people haven't heard it, so I'm going to tell the story again. Why do you think you inherit your mitochondria from your mother? Anybody have any idea? Okay, who wants a sex ed lesson? You want a quick sex ed lesson? Okay, I hope they forgive me at Phylex for giving a sex ed lesson. Mitochondria have their own separate DNA, separate from everything else. And you have, when the sperm comes to the egg, you know, you have two parts of the sperm. What do you have? You have the head and the tail, right? Where do you think that all the mitochondria in the sperm are going to be? What powers the sperm's movement? You know, the sperm swims upstream to fertilize the egg. How does a sperm swim to fertilize the egg? In the tail, right? The, the movement of the tail makes the sperm move. Okay, that's a sperm. <laughs> and since mitochondria have their own DNA, all the mitochondria in the tail, when the sperm gets to the egg, what part of the sperm goes inside the egg? Just the head. The head contains all the other DNA for your eye color, for your hair color, for how tall you're going to be, for how cool of a guy you're going to be. All of that is determined by the DNA in the head. But because mitochondria have their own separate DNA and all the mitochondria are in the tail of the sperm, which never enters the egg, that's why you inherit your mitochondria only from your mother. 